Hello, I'm Tom Morello, and this is The Night Watchman Speaks. I am The Night Watchman, as well as being Tom Morello, and I answer your questions that you submit at nightwatchmanmusic.com, and that's how it works. So let's go. Question number one. Oh, this, I'm in a car at a secret location in Los Angeles where we film The Night Watchman Speaks right now because we are up, to, we're, secret missions are going on that are really affecting the the balance of power in the United States. A lot of them have to be done from a compact car on a side street in Los Angeles. That's one question that you dare not, that's the only question I won't answer, is why are you doing these interviews in the, in the car? Question number one is, Dear Mr. Morello, your guitar playing has really inspired and changed the way I play guitar. And with this change, I noticed I really messed up my guitar by breaking my toggle switch many a time and damaging my amp through the high pitch noises from my whammy pal. So my question is, how many times have you needed to replace your toggle switch and any other gear because of how you play? Well, the toggle switch that I first began toggling with was on a Gibson Explorer guitar. And that one, like, broke down pretty quick and had to be replaced regularly. Uh, through doing some research, just trial and error research, I finally found a toggle switch. I think it's manufactured by Ibanez or maybe they farm it out. But I got a bunch of them that seem pretty resilient and uh, last, you can get a year or two of hard toggling out of them before they break. They will eventually break down. But the, the, the traditional ones are not made to be used in such a violent fashion as uh, I use them. So I say good luck with that. I mean, the ones, the Gibson ones are pretty, pretty sturdy, but depending on the force with which you toggle, uh, you may need to, uh, I don't, there's not, I don't know the specific brand that I use. I don't know that there is a specific brand. But uh, I say good luck with that. I've never blown up an amp using the whammy pedal, though. That's curious to me. And that has to do with, that's something you probably ask at your local music shop. Like, an amp should handle high-pitched sound. So there may be, you may have some ohm setting incorrect on the back of the amp. I'm not a tech guy, as you may have gleaned from the answer to your question. Next, question number two. How did you come up with the idea of making The Night Watchman Speaks? Uh, it actually started with, you know, years ago, I, when I was on tour, like on the tour bus, I would have time to kill and sort of send out on my Twitter feed, hey, I got two hours till we roll into Boise, Idaho. Does anyone have any questions? And lots of questions would come in and, you know, many more than I could answer during the course of a two-hour trip. But I found the questions to be more often more interesting stimulating and ones that fans actually wanted to hear than a lot of stuff that I'm asked in the many interviews that I do. So I thought having a regular forum where um, friends and fans could ask questions and we could have an ongoing dialogue be something I'd be interested in doing. And so that's what why I began doing it and why I still do it today. Um, next question. What do you believe are the most important things when it comes to forming and maintaining a band? Well, those are two very different things. The important things with forming and maintaining a band are two very different. The, in forming a band, I mean, it depends on what you want your band to do. If you want to be a, you know, a uh, an Ario Speedwagon tribute band in Peoria, Illinois, then you need to find people who love Ario Speedwagon and know the music well, and you know, then you're set. If you want to play original music, um, I mean, my uh, my criteria for like what makes a band great is pretty simple. It's like what makes your band great is pretty simple. You have to love it. Uh, and then if the rest of the world does fine, if they don't, then you're still going to be successful because you, oh, the camera's getting a little shaky there. You're still going to be successful because you're playing music that you love, whether it's in your basement, in front of friends, whether it's, you know, in a stadium in France somewhere. So, um, you know, make sure you love what you're doing. And that is how you get a band. How to maintain a band is another story entirely. Quite often musicians who, uh, uh, you know, Sometimes they're brothers or sisters. Sometimes they're, uh, um, you know, pre-existing friends. Often bands are formed from people who come together because they have a musical chemistry that works, that they like, or that becomes commercially successful. And then they're bound together because they're a band before they've established any sort of, you know, rapport as as friends. So I'd say like the most important thing to maintaining a band is to have very very open and honest communication between the band members so that stuff doesn't fester and so people don't talk behind each other's backs because a lot of times a lot of the stuff that drives bands apart has to do with you know musicians who are talented often tend to be you know um, eccentric and sometimes pe people like I certainly am and sometimes you know 
the stuff that becomes grist for the mill for causing band problems often could be um, uh, done away with if band members like, talked like grown-ups to each other very openly and honestly about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's my recommendation. Good luck with you and your band. Next question. There is quite a bit of biblical allusion in the album One Man Revolution. I don't have a specific question about this, but can you just speak about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, I grew up Catholic and went to Mass, was brought to Mass every morning from the time I was a bit infant till probably, four, you know, maybe 13, 14 years old. Uh, and and so, like, a lot of those, you know, while a lot of times you're a kid, you go to church, you just kind of are there until you're freed to not be in church. You know, a lot of those uh, sort of biblical stories and those narratives, you know, they're, they become a, a, a part of, you know, sort of the, the, the way you order the world and, and the, 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 the allegories in, in those narratives I find very sort of powerful and compelling um, as, as stories, you, you know, even taking out any of the any of the divine. Uh, and so like once Catholic, kind of always Catholic, you know, for better, better or worse. So that's, you know, in, in more recent years, especially when I was writing the, 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 I, the first Night Watchman record, I was reading a lot of like the, 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 the gospels that don't appear in the New Testament, like the, uh, the Gnostic Gospels and things like that. So some of those, which have very sort of interesting, different take on it, and sort of I like to compare and contrast the two. Anyway, those stories have stuck with me since the time I was a kid, and that I find resonance uh, in those tales and how they relate to, uh, or how the Night Watchman relates to a, a troubled world. Uh, thank you very much for another round of interesting and thoughtful questions. Uh, to ask your own questions, you may go to Night Watchman Speaks. The Night Watchman Speaks, is that... Just Night Watchman Music, sorry. Nightwatchmanmusic.com. Nightwatchmanmusic.com. And there's a section on there, Night Watchman Speaks. Click on that, ask your questions. I'll be happy to answer them at a later time. Thank you very much, as always, and adios, people.